All right, we're just now getting started. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. All right, so we already got some questions coming in. This is great. We're so excited that you guys are here with us and we can't wait to get started. So let's kick it off. Um, my name is Rebecca. You guys might recognize me from some of the videos that we have posted on our page. Uh, welcome to our event today. We're so excited to share with you one of our amazing college partners, Hope College. So we have Jim Crawley here and he's gonna share a lot of fantastic information about Hope. So real quick, before we get started, if you're on Zoom, go ahead and drop where you're from so we can see where we have people joining us from. If you have a question, feel free to ask it in the Q&A. And if you're joining us on Facebook, then you can go ahead and ask any questions you want in the comment section. You can say hi, tell us where you're from, um, and then we'll get started. So Jim, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. Great, thanks Rebecca, and welcome everybody. It's a pleasure to be speaking to you today. Um, what I wanna talk about today is this Hope College, which is where I work. I'm the Director of Global Recruitment here at Hope. And um, we're gonna tell you a little bit about Hope, but I've been in the field for about 25 years. So I'm more than happy to um, field other questions as well. Um, but my expertise today obviously is with uh, the ins and outs of Hope College, the admission, the uh, scholarship and academic programs and all those fun things. So let's take a look. You got a beautiful shot right here, of just an evening uh, outside of our chapel here at Hope College. But let's look at um, uh, the US. So why, as we're thinking about, or as you're thinking about potentially coming to the US, these are some of the reasons that I think students tell me as to why they're coming. I think they do value certainly the education in the US. And um, it's one of many, obviously, we're one of many locations in the US, but there's also many locations globally. I mean, the world is full of great institutions. It's a matter of you finding the right place for you. I mean, that's what's really important. So we are located in the upper Midwest. We're in Michigan. So that black dot with the arrow pointing at it, or not the circle with the arrow pointing at it, we're on the west side of the state of Michigan. We're definitely in the north. Um, so in terms of the weather, for example, um, we do have winter. We're still in the fall or the autumn season right now, where it's actually kind of warm for us right now. We're still without jackets, uh, but that will change probably in the next few weeks. Um, so we do get all four seasons here, as do the whole kind of upper tier of the US uh, will get all four seasons. Um, but I think students are looking to the US because of the quality of the education, because of some of the opportunities it offers. Um, and I think you know, you're gonna have a good time too. I mean, you're gonna study hard, but you're also gonna be very involved very likely and you're gonna have a great time. So let's zoom in a little bit on Michigan. And we see that, um, again, we're in the shape of a hand or a shape of a mitten down in the bottom. And uh, um, we are located where the beginning of that orange line is over in Holland. So we're very close to Lake Michigan. Um, the, the Great Lakes are the largest uh, freshwater bodies of lake, uh, lakes and freshwater bodies of water in the world. Sorry, I can't speak real well today. Um, they are uh, beautiful. And um, we kind of try to get you out there to see some of it when you come for international student orientation. We want you to experience a little bit of Michigan. So we do a weekend away, uh, right the very first right after you arrive before we get into all the serious stuff related to um, orientation. Um, it's a great spirit, great community spirit. It's a beautiful tourist town. You're seeing one of the kind of a shot of downtown, some of the, the brew pubs and some of the restaurants there in the top photo. And then, of course, a beautiful shot of Lake Michigan with one of the lighthouses on the bottom. Um, but it's a beautiful location to be. So why Hope College? Um, well, I think there's a number of reasons, but I think people do really feel like this is a welcoming place to be. They feel like it's a very family-like atmosphere. Um, they feel like that, they, that whether they're on campus or in the community, they feel like this is the place where they belong. Um, there are amazing opportunities, and I'll speak to a few of those. Um, our, our professors are very caring. They do. They're very involved in all aspects of campus life, so you will see them in the classroom. Of course, um, all of our classes are taught by professors, so we don't use graduate level. We don't have any graduate students, so we don't use graduate assistants to teach classes. They're all taught by professors. Um, you'll see professors, of course, in the classroom, you'll see them in athletic events and cultural events and fine arts events. I mean, you'll see them all over campus. So they're very active in the campus life. 
And of course, because we're a smaller school and we have a, an 11 to one a faculty to student ratio, you're definitely gonna get some individualized attention, which is great. Um, we are a Christian college. Um, and I think Christian colleges in the US are kind of almost subdivided into two groups. You have a group of schools that are, that are, that are, that are Christian college universities that are more like Bible colleges. And there's certainly nothing wrong with that. that the atmosphere that they provide may be very appealing to you, but they would have more um, regulations and rules maybe um, associated with living and going to that school, um, as opposed to another kind of the other group of Christian schools that Hope College is a part of that, that don't have the mandatory statement of faith, don't have mandatory chapel. Um, we do have, um, you'll see some, some more information a little bit later about our spiritual life, but um, we kind of feel like um, that should be a personal uh, choice as to how involved you want to be in your own personal life, right? Your, your spiritual life. So welcoming community, this just gives a few shots of uh, the kind of people feeling really comfortable doing something. So in the upper left-hand corner, you've got people just down a street corner, just students that are just chatting, they're downtown. Um, you've got a large uh, crowd watching a basketball or volleyball game in the upper right. Um, community and campus members alike there. Um, you've got just a few friends strolling on the beach down on the left and on the bottom right, you've got um, that's our international night where we have performances from around the world, um, and it's international students, uh, U.S. abroad students, and uh, U.S. based students who have gotten together to do performances from the native countries, which is a really phenomenal night. It sells out the theater every time they do it. Um, I mentioned about the caring professors, and really what this shows is um, professors in three settings. You've got a computer lab, you've got a classroom, and you've got a cultural event. And there are, there are students and there are teachers or professors in each one of these photos. Um, they are very, again, very active in our students' lives, and they really care about their students, which is phenomenal. 12 to 1, 11 to 1, 12 to 1, it fluctuates a little bit year to year. Um, I think we're actually down to 11 to 1 now, student teacher ratio, a student to professor. Um, that close collaboration, the positive relationships is really incredible. What I like to also tell students is, you know, because your faculty member gets a chance to know you, if they feel that there's going to be um, an opportunity, an internship or a job opportunity that might be great for you, they've gotten to know you, they know what your strengths are. So when they find an opportunity they think is right for you, they're going to bring it to you. You know, if that happens, and they're going to say, hey, I think this is one you should look at. And, and I'm willing to write a recommendation letter for you if you decide to apply for it. So by them getting to know your strengths, they can then help, um, you know, maybe toss an opportunity your way if they happen to get it. Um, I, I should also mention that faculty are very involved with our students with research. It's not a situation where our students do faculty for uh, do research for faculty, they do research with faculty. And we have more than um, two million dollars of grants going on at any one time. So um, you'll see later that we have a ranking um, that we're in the rankings for the, the level of undergraduate research that we do. Just a few of the opportunities I think that are worth mentioning. Um, we do a lot of study abroad. And so the, they're in Shanghai in the upper left photo. And that's a group, I don't know what class they were necessarily affiliated with, but we do a May term and, and we do 10 or 15 options in May term are usually study abroad options. Plus we have literally dozens of countries that are available for semester long study abroad. The woman in the upper right is actually doing an internship at the World Health Organization. She's probably glad she did it then and not now. Um, that would be a crazy place to be working right now. Um, I'm glad they're doing their work, but it would be a crazy place to be. Um, the, the, the photo in the bottom left is at the New York Stock Exchange in New York. Um, and the gentleman you see next to the woman in the red uh, blazer, um, the, um, he is a Hope alum. And he, at the time, was working at New York Stock Exchange, and now he's the president of Hope College. So um, the president is very visible. Um, he's, he's, despite his, um, he's, he's balding a little early, but he, he is actually very young. He's only just in his low 30s, um, or his upper 30s right now. Um, so he's a young president. Um, bottom right, the woman is sitting for an interview on campus. So we do a lot of interviews for internships and for jobs right on campus. So academic opportunities at Hope, um, we have over 90 different majors, minors, and pre-professional. Our strengths are in the STEM field, which is many of them, including an accredited, an ABET accredited engineering program, business psychology and performing arts. Those are some of the biggest programs. We have over 90 though. So there's a lot of different things to choose from. These just happen to be the bigger ones. Um, almost all, 93% of our students 
participate in experiential learning. So 93 out of 100, 93 out of every 100 students participate in research, internships, or study abroad, or more often than not, a combination of, of, one, of two of those, at least. So you have a great opportunity to build up that resume. And that's really what it's all about. Right now, you're trying to you know, potentially get into a college. But once you get into the college, building the resume starts all over again. And you're, you're building your resume to go on to graduate school or to get a job. And so we want to give you some of that experience here on campus that will allow you, or even sometimes off campus, that will allow you to build that resume and to get that experience that you need and want to be better than the next person applying for that job or, or applying for graduate school. One of the opportunities that many of our students get is that we hire 250 of our students every summer to do paid research. Now, most of it is STEM research, but not all of it. Um, so students, again, get a chance to be here in the summer and be paid to do what they love to do, and that's to research in their field of study. So that's just one of our many, many opportunities. I mentioned the research a couple different times, and we are ranked number 23 by US News in the top 64 colleges in the nation for undergraduate research. Now that includes, and the schools above us would be schools like Yale, Stanford, and MIT, and Princeton, Northwestern. Those are schools that are above us. So, I mean, we're in very good company. Um, and we're actually in the, in the in company with some, some of the strongest and most prestigious and most selective schools in the nation. Um, so we have that much research happening here at Hope. Um, we're also in Colleges That Change Lives, which is a really neat book. Um, it's not a ranking book, but they've chosen 45 schools that they that they really respect and feel that the student, that the, that the institutions really care about the students. And really our goal is to help you transform and help you move on to even a better life once you leave Hope. Um, so we're very pleased to be a part of colleges that change lives. On campus, you'll see a variety of buildings. Um, and I even threw in a couple on the top middle and top right that there was some snow in it, just so you, so you get a few winter pictures in there. But we do have a lot of different buildings. Most of our buildings, with the exception in this, in this montage, the only one that's old is in the bottom, that's Graves Hall. Graves just has a few classrooms. It's been totally renovated in the inside, but it's one of the iconic buildings at Hope and this gateway you're seeing with the, the Hope College letters. It's, it's kind of a place where everybody takes their picture if they've come to Hope College. Um, the chapel is right next door to it. Um, those are some of the two, two of the older buildings on campus. Um, but a lot of newer buildings. Um, we really, excuse me, spent a lot on the infrastructure of our campus. And I think students are definitely really enjoying that aspect of Hope College because they're getting very modern, very high tech facilities. So along those lines, uh, one of the facilities we have, multiple facilities housing art, dance, music, and theater. Um, so uh, students can you major or minor or just participate. You don't even have to major or minor to be in the events, right? To be in the orchestra, to be in a dance uh, recital, um, to do an art show, to um, you know, perform with the musical groups or the theater, whatever. You don't have to be a major or minor. In fact, even for getting a scholarship of up to $3,000, you don't have to be a major or minor. You just have to participate. Um, in, in that particular fine art in some way or another. And that's an agreement that you, between you and the department as to what your level of participation is. And you'll know that before you sign the agreement um, uh, to accept the scholarship. We do have in the Martha Miller Center for Global Communication, we do have the International Student Center. So we have full-time international student staff there. I happen to work out of admissions, but my good colleagues there in the International Center will, will be working with students once they become Hope College students, um, they would uh, work with the, the global, um, the Center for Global Communication on immigration advising, international student programming, international night, all kinds of different things happening there. And of course, like most campuses, we do have a student and culture center, and there, that's kind of the hub of student life on campus. So lots of activities, movies, um, uh, locations, even for dances and things like that, I mean, that can happen in there. So there's a lot of space in there. And so a lot of events, uh, the inside events will happen there. And right outside is what we call the Grove. And there's no picture of this, but it's an outside area with some trees and some open area right in the middle of campus. And we do a lot of stuff outside too. Um, and the Grove is a great place to do that. And when there's not events happening, you'll see people sitting on the grass or putting up hammocks between the trees. College. Um, it's not something that you have to participate in. Again, we feel that when you enter college, you're adulting then, so it's time for you to make some decisions. Um, but we do offer chapel three times a week from 1030 to 1050, a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it is optional. Um, but you'll see this is a picture not of a concert happening, this is chapel. So we have over a thousand students that attend chapel every time we have it just because they want to, um, not because they have to. 
Um, it's just something they enjoy doing. So faculty, staff, and students all, um, if they want to, it's open to them. Um, and then obviously you just have a couple pictures of the outside of the stained glass window and the outside of our chapel as well. Uh, mentioned the 20 person or uh, 20 minute chapel services. We do non-denominational on uh, service on Sunday and also a Catholic mass on Sunday. Um, we built a new campus ministries building. So for a lot of the organizations that are related to ministry, um, they have a place to have some of their meetings. Um, they have great outside space with like rocking chairs on the on the patio on the, on the cover the porch kind of area. So it's really, really a nice building. It's right in the middle of campus. So the students can really um, be involved there if they want to. So I need to mention athletics. We are an NCAA Division three school, which means we can't do athletic scholarships but we do offer some incredible levels of athletics. Um, we have students going to national championships and teams going to national championships or national tournaments um, every year practically in one sport or another. Our women's basketball team is undefeated for the last two years, but because of COVID, they've not been able to compete in any national tournaments. So um, hopefully this year they will continue that run of, of being undefeated and, and move on to the national tournament again. Um, but you're seeing here various fields, lacrosse, soccer, uh, football, um, some inset photos of swimming, uh, et cetera. So all our fields are on one end of campus. Um, so it's about a yeah, 10 to 15 minute walk from any other place on campus. So it's a beautiful complex. Here's our varsity teams. It is very difficult to make, really to make any varsity team in the US if you're talking about, well, even if it's a school that, like, like Hope, it's NCAA Division Three that does not have scholarship, it's still extremely difficult to make the team. Um, because these kids are, are, are coming to hope because of a combination of the academics and the strong athletics. So they were extremely strong athletes in, in high school or secondary school, and they're, they're coming to hope because they really believe in the strength of both, again, the strength of the academics and the athletics combined. But these are the various sports that we do offer at the competitive um, varsity level. Some have JV teams as well, they're junior varsity teams. Um, and then we also, this is the inside of the basketball volleyball arena. Um, typically pretty full as it is pretty much in these photos. Um, very, very strong rivalries with a lot of other uh, schools locally in our division. So that does draw a lot of people to basketball, especially, but also the volleyball. This is the intramural facility or the recreation facility. So you can um, just go there if you want to play basketball or run the elevated track that's around the field or to, to go in the pool. I mean, and there's fitness classes and there's uh, various areas in there where you can get some some things done as well related to your fitness. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm on campus where you're required to live on campus for three years. We do have a variety of different facilities on campus. Again, show you a couple of winter shots. Um, not a lot of snow. There's snow here, certainly, but where you see the piles there, that's been piled because it's, um, um, excuse me, <coughs> sorry, because it's been uh, plowed from those areas. We do have all the different areas of Sorry. Sorry, I had to cough there. Um, all the different areas of uh, types of options within uh, the living arrangements. So it's all male, all female, traditional style, um, suite style, apartment style, et cetera. So students can choose from different options depending on what year they are. So definitely want to mention the scholarship opportunities. So the very first one is a new one. First of all, it's important to realize that this is a very competitive full tuition initiative. It is open only to first year, first year in school, first year in college student. So you can't be a transfer student to apply for this, this particular scholarship. You have to apply and be admitted by December 1. And then there's a, then you'll be invited to apply to Hope Forward if you're admitted. And Hope Forward is a separate application with an additional essay, a very specific essay on a specific topic. And then those that um, complete the application completely, like fill out everything, and that they do submit an essay based on the topic and the length that is requested, they will very likely then, and it's written well, um, like just not, if it's, you know, if it's just kind of thrown out there and there's no real organization to it, then you probably wouldn't move forward. But if it's written well, we'll move you forward very likely to the interview stage. Interviews are going to be happening all along the way, but primarily after the first of the year. 
And then we will select 20 recipients, 20 uh, for the fall of 22. Those recipients will um, be offered the opportunity to attend Hope College tuition free. They would pledge, uh, they would sign an agreement or a pledge to say they will, that they pledge to give back to Hope College on an annual basis after they graduate. So a donation, a monetary donation of their choosing, um, give it back to the college uh, annually after they graduate. There's no, there's no set amount of money. There's no set amount of time. Of course, we would hope this is a long-term relationship with you. Um, and um, so this is the competitive process, 20 awards this year, of the 22 that were awarded this year, six were international, one was US abroad. Um, for those that, the rest of the students that either don't qualify for Hope Forward or don't get it, we do consider you for up to $25,000 in scholarship, which is still a pretty good award. So if you if you happen to get, if you're one of the chosen 20 to go forward, you would still have to show an additional 15,000 in support, which covers room and board, health insurance and books. If you get the regular international student scholarship instead, because you can't get both, if you get the regular international student scholarship of 25,000, then you need to, um, show up to 27,000 more in aid because our total cost is 52,000 for everything for a year, okay? A US students can file the FAFSA to be potentially considered for some need-based aid. Um, all students that have a, a good level of talent could apply for a Distinguished Artist Award in Music, Theater, Dance, and Art. Um, that is up to $3,000 and that can be added on top of the academic award. So you could get, it would be not added to Hope Forward, it would become part of that Hope Forward award, um, but it can be added to um, the other merit-based aid, the 25,000, okay? So that gives you an idea of some of our scholarship opportunities. We do not have full ride awards. The only full tuition awards we have are related to Hope Forward. Um, again, that's a, that's a, it's gonna be um, a competition. There'll probably be up to 200 kids that are interviewed for the 20, 20, 20 offerings. I won't go into detail because I know you work with that degree. You would work with that degree in the application process, but there's nothing unusual about our, about our admissions process. Um, the application, the transcripts, the English proficiency, just saying that SAT and um, oops, SAT and, uh, uh, and recommendation letters are optional. We do give college credit potentially for AB higher levels, A levels and AP courses. Um, and we do holistic approaches to the whole application. I'm looking, I'm reading everything that's in the application. Um, in, in making my decision, but the transcripts are the are probably the biggest um, weight factor in the decision. So there's my contact information. Of course, work with that degree because number one, they're a great organization, but number two, they'll help you through so, um, this, this uh, application process, the admissions process, and they'll certainly communicate with us if there's anything that, that they need. So I will stop sharing and see what kind of questions either about Hope College or even generic ones I'm open to answering whatever um, might be out there. Awesome, thank you so much, Jim. So we had a couple questions come in, uh, a number of questions about scholarships, which you covered very well. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about your students and double majoring? Sure. So double majoring is certainly possible with most majors. I'd say that there's some where it would be it would be extremely difficult. I think engineering is one where it's very difficult because the amount of time you're going to be in the lab already, um, and you're probably going to do some internships and the amount of math and physics you have to take. I think engineering would be a hard one. It's not impossible, but it'd be a hard one. Another one that would be really hard is like nursing or education. So there's some that are pretty intense majors that have a lot of courses that make up that major that would just make it challenging to do another major, especially if you're trying to graduate in four years, which I think most students would like to do. Um, but there's other things that certainly things that combine with business, some things that combine with science um, that certainly can be double majors that would be able to be done in four years. Sometimes if, if they have some of the same base courses, like statistics is a base course for business, but it's also a base course for some sciences. Um, so, and economics, for example, is can be as a base course for, um, for business, but it can also be a general education course. So it can apply toward any, a number of different programs. 
So it's a matter of talking to your advisor right away when you arrive. Whatever school you go to, it's important to talk to your academic advisor frequently and get their opinion, get their assistance um, in setting out the schedule that you need and you want to do the things that you need and want. So uh, you're going to have an academic goal. Obviously, you want to graduate in four years. You want to major at this or that, whichever major you want. But you also may say, but here's where I want to work. So I want to work in this field. So talking to your academic advisor and maybe the career placement office about what kind of different majors are these employers looking for? Because although you might be surprised that it's not always the majors that you think about that are the most popular ones for them to look at. Hope that helped a little bit with the majors. And, and there's also the major minor combination. So a minor is less credits. So many students will have a major and one or two minors, or they could have a major and a minor. Um, and, and those are things you can really tell your future employer about that you spent some extra coursework getting this major and this minor so that um, it could help you depending on, of course, what job you're trying to go for. Awesome. Thanks for that. And another thing I just want to touch on, because this is such a unique thing that Hope College does, is in the summertime, you hire up to 250 students to do paid research, right? Right. Yeah. At the school. And international students are eligible for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yep, so international students are allowed to work up to 20 hours a week on campus during the school year, and they're allowed to work full time on campus during the during any break periods, which include summertime. Um, so this is a, and really an incredible experience for students to gain really six weeks of very valuable research of researching with faculty members. Again, you're not researching here at Hub, you're not researching for faculty members, you're researching with them. And the difference is when you research for a faculty member, which happens very frequently at a larger institution, the faculty member is going to get the credit for this research very typically, because again, you're doing the work for them. Um, and they usually necessitate numerous you know, researchers trying to get their work done. But when you do it with a faculty member, very often you are being uh, credited in the paper or the presentation along with the faculty member. So again, that's something that's going to, go, going to go on your resume. So not only can you say in your resume that you did six weeks of research in biomedical sciences, but you can even get more specific and say, this is what our research was about, especially if that's something that you're thinking of going on to graduate school for, or you want to get a research job or something um, that's going to be really influential. Awesome. That, and I just want to highlight that is such a unique offering that Hope does that students can really take advantage of. That's fantastic. Um, what are you guys doing right now in terms of COVID? Is, are all the classes in person? Yeah, we were actually in person all of last year as well. Um, we didn't, well, the only time we, we went online totally was right when it hit. So those last two months of, of the spring of 20. So 2021, we were in person last year. Um, we did about 60% of our classes. No, I think that's 40% of our classes were totally in person. 30% were hybrid and 30% were online last year. But the students were here. Probably 90% of the students were here on campus. Um, this year, again, everybody is back. Um, we're probably up to 90 to 95% of our classes are in person. Um, the only restriction we have right now is masks inside if you're not in a closed room like I'm you're seeing my background but I'm actually in a closed office so I can be without my mask but um, if I'm out in my common area of our building or really any building on campus then then we're supposed to have the mask on or we need to actually it's it, that's that's the current rule. Um, I suspect because the rates continue to go down a little bit in the area that will probably be dropping that one as well that regulation but we want to just we want to be safe we want our students to be safe that's what um, that's our primary concern is, is students, staff, and faculty are safe doing what they love doing. Um, and so, um, but right now um, we are, uh, we've spaced seats out a little in the classroom. That's another kind of thing we did different, not something we had to do. We just figured that was some, a good idea. Um, and uh, we're just monitoring things. We do a lot of testing on campus. We do wastewater testing from the different dormitories and other facilities so that we can kind of catch a high level of bacteria before it becomes a spread. Um, so we're testing uh, that uh, pretty frequently. And if we if we do notice an uh, elevated level of bacteria in a certain um, building, we're going to ask everybody to come and be tested, um, even if they're vaccinated, just to you say somebody somebody has it or we wouldn't have these elevated levels of bacteria. So um, we're doing a lot of that testing, which is keeping things safe, keeping our students happy that they're here, um, because even this year, there's still some some schools that are still online um, and we've been in person the whole time. Awesome. Love that you prioritize the health of your students. That's wonderful. Yep. Well, Jim, thank you so much for joining us today. 
uh, and sharing all this great information about hope. For all of the students who have joined us or who might watch this replay, if you're interested in learning more about hope and applying, we're here to help you. So Edigree works with students all over the globe by providing free support and resources to help you prepare, apply, and attend one of our partner institutions like Hope College. Um, so to get started, you can create your free Edigree profile and you can click the Start Application Now button at the bottom of the Hope College profile. And we have posted some more information in the chats and in the comments. So feel free to reach out to us with any questions you have. Jim, thank you so much again. We really appreciate you taking time to chat with us today and our students. Um, thank you so much. And everyone, I hope you guys have a great day. Great. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.